Hello, I'm BJ Arnett, and this is This Day with BJ Arnett. I am so excited about today's program because it's a subject that we've not approached here on this day, and it's all about where you live. I'm specifically talking about interiors. And my guest today is Dr. Bridget Tay, who is a fabulous interior designer. Dr. Bridget Tay, I, you know, I've known you for a minute now, so wow. you're my friend, and I just really, really appreciate your excellence <laughs> in what you do. How do you make, you know, that old song, A House Is Not A Home? Uh, <laughs> Luther Vandross, for those who don't know. But how do you make a home, a harmonious, a sanctuary, a place that, you know, you want to run to and not run away from because it's all chaos. Right. How do you do that? And that's, we really want to know. That's a wonderful question. A lot of times people don't think about that. Yeah. They don't think about your house. They just think about it's a place just to go and live and to sleep and wake up and go back to work. Mm -hmm. But a home is more a place for your tranquility. Yes. For where you, that's your do domain. Yes. God put us on this earth to be somewhere comfortable somewhere that we can just pretty, pretty much with our families enjoy each other. Because a lot of times when you, think, when you think about it, you have a lot of people that stay in homes and they don't want to go home. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you want, I want to make, I'm that type of person, I want to make your home what it is a really a home. Yes. And that's what it's all about, putting those things together to make, uh, make that customer happy, to make them see the different things that they hadn't seen in their home. So that's why I come in and I step in. Mm -hmm. Where is it that you have been able to step in and get to somebody's home and it's more than what you put in the house. Oh yeah. It's who you put in the house. That's true. Okay, so how do you navigate when it's that, it's no longer a surface thing where it's let's put this chair here and make sure mm -hmm. the sunlight is coming this way. It's more going on, Dr. Tay, than mm -hmm. just putting the pieces of the house together. Well, it kind of starts with the, pretty much the client and who all lives in the house. What do they like? What do they dislike? What makes them comfortable? What are some of the things that make them happy? And we'll talk about more of that when we get and talk about my key factors that I go by just, just on any type of design work that I do. I go by these factors, but there are certain things that you look for. You look in, when I go into a do just say a consultation, just to see the person's home. Mm -hmm. I look at the things they already have and I look at them, I talk to them, I listen. That's more important That's to be, the most able, important. be able to listen to what mm -hmm. they're saying. And, and what and they're not saying. And what they're not saying, exactly. That's another thing, what they're not saying. And just those key things that pretty much help me navigate the different things that I want to put inside their house. There's, there's a very special something that happens when you look at beautiful interior design. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love going into new homes where it's all been staged, mm -hmm. you know, and everything's mm -hmm. all pretty. Be but it gives you this, ha, ah, Feeling. You, you relax when you are in a home that everything is organized and it's set up exactly right. But that's not where I came from. <laughs> I remember uh, growing up at my grandma's house, you could not go in the living room because mm -hmm. everything was perfect. And in my mother's house, you could not go in the living room or the dining room. We had the two places we could mm -hmm. go. Now, when you went to our rooms, it was total chaos. <laughs> Total understand. chaos. But how do you, what did, what did you come from? What makes Bridget Tay who she is to be able to look at someone's environment and assess the situation and make things so beautiful? Because I've seen mm -hmm. your work and it's some pretty <laughs> stuff. So what it is is pretty much being able to, I call myself a lifestyle interior designer. I want customers to be able to come to their house and live in their house, not just to have a staged house. Of course, I do staging as well, yeah. but it's more to make it livable and also just appeasing to the customer itself. So what, coming back and you talk about where I came from, where I came from at the time back then, we didn't have all of the, the, the beautiful furniture and all of those types of things. My mother had really, really nice furniture, but it wasn't extravagant. Right, some right. of the things that some of my customers want right now. Mm -hmm. But just knowing how certain furniture, certain colors, certain things make people happy. And that's what makes the person happy. You come to your domain, you open up the door, you want to make sure that that's something that brings you to make you want to come home. And, and, want, and want gives to you live joy. There. Gives you joy, right. So, mm -hmm. and, and you know, as, as a teacher, which we both are, mm -hmm. we recognize that setting the atmosphere for our students 
and mm -hmm. making sure there's a harmonious atmosphere in the room is so important. And we True. get that. And I do recognize certain colors make certain reactions. Mm -hmm. But when I think about my childhood, I don't know what reaction I was trying <laughs> to get out of this hot pink bedspread <laughs> with the big orange pillows on the bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was, you know, I look at it now in pictures of, and my mother has of me standing next to that bed in my canary yellow hip mm -hmm. hugger pants <laughs> with an afro this big. And why is this cameraman laughing over here? Why? I've just, I don't understand. But these are the, the mm -hmm. that's part of my memories. And those memories right. I recognize actually came into my choice of design in my own home. I want vibrance. Mm -hmm. I want energy. I want something that when I walk in the door makes me smile. You have to get mm -hmm. into people's business, Dr. Tay, to get up in all of that. And I know you do, because I know you. you. You have to. You definitely have to. And it kind of goes back to what you just talked about, your childhood. If you think about, we talk about, you think about interior design, but you think about fashion. Fashion and interior design go together. Hand in hand. And it, and it repeats itself. Yes. Like you said, you, saw, you had your canary Girl, yellow yes. on, but then you have that pink comforter said yes. then those orange pillows yes. if you think about kitchens back then way back when they had white kitchens but what's going on right now yes. white, white kitchens. kitchens people want white kitchens so it just kind of repeats itself but it all works same together. cycle as fashion same cycle same cycle you know, most of the time you have a lot of designers that are fashion designers and also interior designers which i am i'm both but then we work together because of what harmonious things as far as color, yes. as far as fabrics, upholstery, all that's a part of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think people don't recognize is that, you know, even with our children, I recognize that if I put soft blue in my son's room, mm -hmm. he was going to be a little calmer. That's true. He came from mm -hmm. live in a, a live wire family, so I mm -hmm. needed to calm his room down. But whenever I had red accessories in his room or bright, bright colors, mm -hmm. he would just be on level 25 all the mm -hmm. time. So I had to learn to bring those mm -hmm. color tones down. But then recognizing that we think about that with children, but we don't think about that with ourselves as mm -hmm. adults or as the parents. How, is it, how important is it for you as the designer to look at that couple to see how they really mm -hmm. move together? Yeah in order to know what color tones, they may be saying one thing, but they need something, something else. else. Yeah, That's definitely true. First of all, when it comes to just working with, let's say a couple, like you just said, a couple, mm -hmm. and two people is different than one. Yes, You indeed. have two people, that means it's two different personalities and two different wants. So what happens is when you're asking both of them, I'm listening to trying to see who likes what. And as a designer, I have to come to a common ground to make sure those two people are satisfied. Right. So when we talk about color, which is one of my first key factors when I get into the design mode, is mm -hmm. that color has to speak to you. Color has movement. It's not just something that's dull, but it's, it speaks to me. So I have to ask them. I may just ask them, I may be by looking at what they already have, what's your favorite color? When you ask any individual what's their favorite color, they have an explanation. Yes. It's like my, my favorite color is hot pink. It's yes. pink. Yes. All shades of pink. Yes. And it's because pink make, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. It's vibrant. Mm -hmm. it, just like you said, when you had the red in your sun's yes. room, it, yes. makes them, it makes you move. Yes. Color is movement. And that's what it's about. When I ask them and they tell me what it is and I see what they have in their house, and most of the time people say they may say, well, my favorite color is orange, but in their house it's all neutral. <laughs> It happens all the time. Which makes no sense because exactly. if this is your favorite color, there's a way to mm -hmm. incorporate that into your home. Exactly. So exactly. you really do have to listen. You have to listen. You have to. And, and color is one of the biggest factors. That's the first thing people look at. It's funny because, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, when you look at someone's home, it really is a reflection of their personality. Mm -hmm. So when I go into a home and it's stark white like I've been in you know <laughs> I've been in some homes where it's stark white and you know everything is high uh shine and all mm -hmm. and I'm like okay do you sit in there at all do y'all <laughs> y'all have conversations in there but, but, so believe how does it or that not, work believe it or not a lot of my clients want white yeah that's now a big days, thing for the right past now. two years it's been all white it's a big they thing they want right white now. kitchens white floors white countertops white I, now, I'm, I'm going to admit, I'm going to admit, I want the white kitchen. I want the white counter. 
I dread the thought of cleaning. <laughs> so that's what pulls me back mm -hmm. every time. So I, I've come to, we're, we're mm -hmm. remodeling now, and so I've come to bring it down to a tone that I can live with and mm -hmm. not go into major fits because mm -hmm. it's not as clean here as right. it is over here. Right. There are so many things to consider. What fabrics do what? What mm -hmm. colors do what? What mm -hmm. lines do what? How do we get all of this together in order to make a home that is not just something that looks good, but something that we can feel great in, mm -hmm. that we, in an active ministry life, we can mm -hmm. just really enjoy ourselves, but it's a livable home. Right, and that goes to my second factor, which is which, which I usually use as scale or proportion. You have to have scale and proportion in your house. Because what happens is I go into people's houses and you see large furniture doesn't fit in the room. Or a rug that's it's too over, small. It's overpowering the right. room. Exactly. Like the, the rug looks like a dot. And the furniture <laughs> looks like it's the, the world monument or oh, something like that. Goodness. So, but the thing is, Having to be able to put that poor proportion and scale together, it brings it all together. You ask, well, how do you bring it together? It's that, it's proportion that. and scale, putting it together with the color. It goes with, the, like you said, the fabrics. Fabrics go off of each other, like your draperies. Yes. Heavy draperies make your fabric, makes your furniture look even better. Really? Uh, even heavier, I'm sorry, even oh, heavier. even heavier. Even heavier, but lighter, lighter, um, like draperies and things like lighter that. Lighter in, in the weight of the in fabric the weight. as well? In the weight, really? in the way it's hung as well. That's a part of it too. So because all I, that's a okay, part so of it. This is mm -hmm. my session and y'all just riding in on it. I just need <laughs> you to know. So what I want is a room that I can walk into and not feel closed in. But I love the history of the fact that this home is uh, 1820. So I want to maintain that 1820 environment only in certain aspects, like the fireplaces, mm -hmm. I want them to stay whole. When I look at historical homes, they mm -hmm. seem to be almost pressing into the room, like it's everything mm -hmm. is heavy. So what you have to do, if you kind of want to break it, bring it into the 2000s yes. you'll, and still leave some of it, you'll try to look for that mid-century modern look. You're going to keep it mid-century, but you're going to bring in modern, some modern furniture or modern pieces, modern artwork, things like that. And then when we get to talk about accessories, accessories bring out everything that the customer wants. I've been and to her house. <laughs> if I had a truck, I would have backed it up <laughs> and took out what I needed. I love the, the things that you do with accessories, and I know mm -hmm. we're going to come back in a few minutes and talk mm -hmm. further about some key points that mm -hmm. we need to handle so that we know how to set this just mm -hmm. right. And, mm -hmm. you know, here's the funny thing, you guys. Have you ever called an expert and you wanted to clean up before they came? <laughs> That's what we got right here. So we have the expert. Mm -hmm. We're going to clean up before you come. <laughs> I know you guys want to find mm -hmm. out more, and we are going to find out more. We've got so much to unearth. When it comes to making a home that has an atmosphere that reflects who you are, that gives the person who's walking into your mm -hmm. home an attitude of refreshing, an attitude that they are being embraced, not a home that's just so nice that they can't even sit down right. Right. And Dr. Tay is the one that's going to guide us through this process. So we're going to be back with a second show that's going to give you the opportunity to take some notes. So go get your pencil and paper because I cannot guarantee you that she won't go fast. She usually does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So be back in just a moment and we'll talk about how to make your house a home.